I'm definitely not a huge gamer, or at least in the traditional sense. My stints in competitive online games like Valorant or CS have been questionable at best, and I've been subject to a lot of pain and suffering on the road to getting good, where I finally gave up at around below average. Despite this, I adore single player games, from the big jaw dropping AAA titles like Elden Ring, The Legend of Zelda, and Control, to the unforgettable indie gems like A Short Hike, Celeste, and Hades. Single player games have been my bread and butter for years. Whether it be casually playing through Super Mario or witnessing cinematic epics like that of Death Stranding, I have spent countless hours being lost in worlds and experiences that could not be replicated otherwise. And yet here I was, stumbling across this overwhelmingly positive reviewed 10 out of 10 RPG Maker horror title that I've never heard of before. The Steam reviews were stellar, basically everyone recommending this game for various reasons. The last RPG Maker horror game I played, but never finished because I'm too scared to play it by myself, was Omori, which was an exceptional title that opened my eyes to the creativity this genre of games has to offer. So I decided to give this game a shot, put all the doubt in the back of my mind, and dive headfirst into the world of the coffin of Andy and Lele. And what an experience it was. But first, I have to give a disclaimer. If you play games for gameplay sake, this game is not for you. The gameplay is boring. From a technical perspective, there isn't really much to say. Being as the only other RPG Maker game I've played was Omori, The Coffin of Andy and Lele is far less interesting of a game to be actually playing than that. The puzzles are too easy, there's not much horror elements, and every choice you make and each path you go feels too spoon-fed to you, as opposed to you piecing the mystery together yourself. Most of the gameplay loop just involves the player controlling either Andrew or Ashley doing tasks, then is followed by a visual novel as cutscene, then goes back to you doing tasks again just to get to the next cutscene. If you're the type of person that hates reading dialogue, this game will be a pain in the ass for you. And even as someone who doesn't mind playing these sorts of games, at times it still felt a bit empty during these parts. In contrast, Omori had me at the edge of my seat throughout the entire time I was playing it, with the interesting environmental details and the genuine horror elements that came with it. If I had to describe how the coffin of Andy and Lele plays, it's sort of like a visual novel that happens to have RPG Maker elements in it to advance the story rather than an RPG Maker game in of itself. However, to me, a game is just another piece of entertainment similar to a film or a TV show. If the story, the characters, the world, and the atmosphere is enough to immerse me, then I'd say The Coffin of Annie and Lele succeeded. The story so far, as as of writing the game is still in early access so only two episodes of the story are out right now, revolves around the siblings Andrew and Ashley Graves, who are, as the player discovers, deranged and psychopathic. They find themselves being locked up in quarantine in their apartment complex for currently unknown or at least mysterious reasons, where they end up killing their wardens by making a deal with a demon, then go on to kill their parents who abandoned them in the apartment to begin with. So, not much has happened yet, and the story seems pretty straightforward, but it is still interesting enough to leave a lot of questions that I hope the game will answer in the future. But what kept me going throughout this entire two and a half hours of gameplay, what I think the part of the game that truly shines, and what convinced me that this game is definitely something to keep on my radar, are the characters, especially the dynamics and interactions each of the characters have with each other. I feel like one of the best examples of this are the characterizations of the main protagonists, Ashley and Andrew. Andrew Graves, the main character and older brother of Ashley Graves, is depicted as a thin, pale-skinned young man with emerald green eyes, black uncombed hair, and a black, slightly oversized jumper. He has a toxic and codependent relationship with his sister, where they enable each other to do insane things ranging from threatening and committing actual violence, having lengthy conversations about topics such as ending themselves, murder, assault, and battery, having questionable feelings for each other, engage in cannibalism, etc, etc. Throughout the time you get to know him, his behavior is oftentimes sardonic and cynical, replying sarcastically or even in an exasperated manner. He finds his sister frustrating to converse with, and him being held captive with her only makes this resentment grow. Despite this, Andrew can be seen engaging in malicious collusion with her, and they collaborate to murder and take advantage of various secondary characters to escape and survive. Meanwhile, Ashley Graves is depicted to have cherry blossom pink eyes and is often displaying an impish smirk when conversing with her brother. Her hair is uncombed like her brother's but tied back in a ponytail. However, unlike her brother, 
Ashley exhibits way more sociopathic and antisocial traits throughout the game. She feels no remorse after committing horrific violent crimes, such as theft, murder, cannibalism, desecration of a corpse, potential incest, satanic ritual abuse, accessory to murder, and even harassment. Ashley's characterization follows the trope of having a brocon or a brother complex, where she would do anything if it ensured Andrew's continued presence by her side, even if it means killing the people closest to them or indulging Andrew in any of his desires. Ashley was shown to be an accessory in her ex-friend Nina's murder when she was a child, and highlighted to have been harassing Andrew's now ex-girlfriend Julia, who also happened to be Ashley's ex-friend. Just like Andrew, she's also codependent on her sibling, which leads to them doing all the insane stuff they did. However, unlike Andrew, she has a more confident, unconcerned, and upbeat attitude that greatly annoys Andrew. Having such an interesting dynamic duo as your main protagonists to a story yielded a lot of great moments in the game, with genuinely funny interactions that I couldn't help but at least smile at sometimes. This is also reflected in when Andrew and Ashley go visit their parents to murder them, where their mother, Mrs. Graves, also exhibits similar levels of craziness and adds a bit of spice to the story. Overall, the story plays out like a dark comedy rather than a genuine horror experience, appealing to those with a generally more dark and sick sense of humor, which I was able to appreciate. The writing is also pretty decent, I would say. I wouldn't go into this game expecting very deep or philosophical conversations, but rather just going in to see how two very deranged people have the most casual conversations about the most insane topics. The dialogue each of the characters have fits perfectly in line with what I would expect them to say, and none of the moments felt out of the ordinary or immersion breaking. The narration dialogue was also done in an interesting manner as well, as it sort of acts like some sort of inner voice of each of the characters as you are playing them, displaying emotions and a bit of personality as well, which I thought was a nice touch. Finally, I wanted to touch on the art for this game, and I'm just going to be honest here, the art was the main draw for me when it first caught my attention about a week ago. The direction the game went with its monochrome tone and all the characters having different colored eyes to indicate their uniqueness was a really nice touch, and the style fits perfectly with the themes and tone of the entire game. Additionally, each visual novel type cutscene interaction had genuinely interesting and overall consistent art that made these interactions that much better, accentuating the moods and tones at any point in time, whether it be murderous, friendly, or just downright questionable. The Coffin of Andy and Lele was a game that I had expected to like, and I'm glad I found myself being actually genuinely intrigued with the world and the characters by the end of what's currently out. I look forward to playing the future episodes as they come out over the following months, and who knows, maybe it'll turn out to be one of the greatest games that nobody has ever played.